I am going to talk about Trident maples today because I don't often deal with uh, Trident maples. It's mainly the Japanese maple or the Acer palmatum and all the different varieties. But the Trident maple has always fascinated me ever since I started doing bonsai back in the 60s and 70s. And the reason why I love Trident maples is because they've got this massive, massive trunk. They are one of the fastest growing maples that you can uh, have. And because they grow at such a fast rate, you know, they make these thick trunks very easily. So a tree with a trunk like this, this was, I guess, imported from Japan about 20 years ago. And if it was brought from Japan 20 years ago, at the time it could have been grown in Japan for another 20 or 30 years. So a tree like this with a big trunk is no more than 50 years old. And this tree I have kept almost uh, in its complete state. That means I haven't pruned many branches and I've always kept it pruned hard back so that there are no big straggly branches to deal with. So this is constantly pruned back to keep it dense and to keep it in shape. I'm also going to talk about some of the other aspects that you will see. That's a long shoot there. So that's what I keep doing throughout the year. So the pads are always um, discernible. You can see the gaps between the pads. Now, if we look closely, I will just show you some of the problems you can have with a very hot summer. This year in, in the UK, we've had the hottest summer for the last, I think, 170 years or ever since records began. The July has been the hottest ever recorded. And during those months in uh, the month of July, we had temperatures as high as 32 degrees. And because of that, this tree has been growing in the full sun throughout throughout that uh, hot spell. I know that they don't need to get dry, but you only need to forget watering or not water at the right time, and you will get the scorching of the leaves. So you can see this happening. When you get this, this is from not watering in time. So we haven't been very meticulous about watering properly. So that is what happens when you don't water properly. But that is grown in full sun. Look at this as a mountain maple. This has been grown in the full sun, just about 10 foot away. And look at it, no scorching at all. So scorching does not need to happen. I was at Wisley only the other day, three days ago, and all the maples at Wisley are in perfect condition. And of course, they've been watering it meticulously, so they're doing well. This also is in the full sun, and this ordinary maple is doing well. And because it's exposed to the sun, this is turning red. The back, which is not exposed to the sun, will not be so red. I always call it sun because sunburn. And it's a good thing. Because it gets exposed to the sun, you get a better autumn color. And you see how the callus... I always like to show people, look at that callusing. And this is the cut paste I put. Can you see the cut paste? And as it calluses, the beauty of using cut paces that it helps callusing fast. So this was only cut in March and look at the callus form there. And this is pushing out the cut paste. So callusing happens very quickly if the tree is growing strong. Bamboo tree. Okay, so yeah, now this is, the pad has been kept flat by putting a piece of bamboo. Let's not digress because we're getting carried away. Now let's me go to all the tried maples that are around. Now that's another tried maple there with a beautiful, beautiful nebari. And I've let it grow to strengthen the tree, but I really shouldn't do that. Now I should just go around and trim some of these back. As I say, don't always trim it as soon as the shoots appear. I let them grow a bit long. So in this case, look at some of these shoots. That's about 30 centimeter, almost 40, 30 to 40 centimeter long. I've let them grow. It's okay to let it grow, but at this time of the year, as we are approaching autumn, I will prune it back. It has helped to strengthen the branches, strengthen the tree, so I can now do this. So this is the work I do on this. And most of the tridents I'm going to deal with, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. See all these long shoots? 
it may look unsightly for a while but I usually let it grow a bit berserk and then we will bring it back. I will also explain to you the benefits of growing long shoots because you can use it for in arching and grafting and all sorts of things but I will come to that in just a moment. So all I'm doing is going around and all these long shoots see where you get dieback you get new shoots so you can form uh, new branches if you let these grow but by and large I think the pads are there and in the early spring I will give it okay so that's that one now this no, particular trident this is a very famous trident I purchased it in 1993 from uh, Terry Kuchi Kato. There were th three Kato brothers. The other Kato, which is your granddad of the Nippon Bonsai uh, Association, he was the oldest Kato brother, but he other, had other brothers. And Terry Kuchi Kato, he was the president of the uh, Suiseki Association in Japan. He ran a nursery in western Saitama. And when I saw this tree for the first time in 1990, um, I really fell in love with it. But he wouldn't sell it. You know, he played hard to get. Uh, bless his soul, he passed away many years ago. And every year I went there, I used to ask him, is it for sale, is it for sale? And he was playing hard to get. It's not for sale, it's a very good tree. He wanted a lot of money for it. And then finally in 1992 visit, he allowed uh, me to <laughs> buy it. And of course, it then arrived into the nursery in 1993, and it's been in the nursery ever since. You can see why it's an expensive tree, but look at the Nebari, look at it. It's like a twin trunk, beautiful base, and it's been growing for a long time. But when it came from Japan, the pot was only like two inches deep. And of course, a lot of Japanese trees are uh, highly underpotted, meaning that they put them in very small pots. And in this country, they don't like being in small pots, so it suffered. So I put it in the deep pot to resuscitate the tree. So this is the tree now, look at, look at it. And I don't usually let long shoots grow. This is the old long shoot. I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to make a cutting. The reason why I want to make cuttings from this is because this is no ordinary trident. This is what we call a frog leaf trident. The leaves are slightly different. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to propagate from this tree and look at it, it's such an old tree, it always produces seed. I'll try and sow the seed and see if the seeds come true, if the seeds come true. But by the way, trident seeds are quite hard to germinate. So this is the frog leaf trident. Now let me move to the conventional trident. That tree, by the way, is growing in the shade tunnel, but just on the uh, doorway, so it doesn't get that hot, so it gets a lot of fresh air, but it's slightly protected. Now these tridents here are growing in the shade netting and we grow them in shade netting because it provides some shade from the hot sun and therefore they do not get so badly scorched. So again most of these trees have been kept fairly well pruned and you can see the condition of them. Tridents by the way have fallen off the popularity charts. Back in the 60s, 70s, and even in the 80s, Trident Maple was very, very popular. But for some reason, people have, uh, you know, lost interest in Tridents. I don't know why, but Trident Maples don't seem to attract so much attention. Mm -hmm. The Mountain Maple uh, catches more attention. Now, this is another of our homegrown trees. And I'd like to show you, there are lots of variation of trident. Now this one, um, this is one of our own field grown trees and we grew these from seed maybe about 30 years ago. But you look at the size of the leaf compared to an ordinary trident. You see this is a, that frog leaf and look at the size of these leaves. So these are very small leaves. So you do get tridents that have different variation in, this, in the varieties. So this is a small leaf one. These we grow in our field and then we develop it ourselves so we grow it mainly for the trunk and then we regrow the branches so this is how these are being made now let me show you some of these other trees these by the way were imported as stumps from japan 
because tridents have thick trunks, I used to literally buy them as stumps. That means all I bought were logs of wood with no branches. They were literally logs of wood. And they came in a very small pot and then I grow them on to make their own branches. So this is typically what I do. I let the shoots get to about 30 centimeter long just to strengthen the tree because while they're growing, they will really strengthen the branches and then you can bring it back and you can always select the long branches that you want to make into proper branches and that's how I do it. Look at that one, look at that one. Let's get a closer view. Careful. All right. Okay. Okay, careful camera. So now this one is a rogue shoot. Can you see this is about one meter long. One meter long in the last couple of months. One meter long. So you must be asking why I grow it. I grow it because it helps to strengthen that branch. Now, now that it's strengthened the branch, I will cut it back there. Cut that off. You can make cuttings with it. And all these long shoots have helped to strengthen the branch. And then I can take it off. So that is how I deal with my tridents. And as a rule, if you do this to most of your deciduous trees, you will get the branches to thicken very fast. And provided you do it at least once a year, do you don't lose control. Another of these, look at that, another 80 centimeter long branch. So we let these grow along just to strengthen the tree, no other reason. And the shape is still there. But mind you, you've always got to keep an eye on it. Don't lose sight of it. Because if you lose sight of it, and you leave it to grow for two years or three years, then you will spoil the branch. You can get branch die back. The strong shoots will take all the energy, and you'll get the established shoots dying off. So you've got to keep a very close eye on this sort of development. But you can clearly see how strong the tree is just by letting that uh, new shoots grow. So this is another one here. Let's show you this one. Let's turn around. I'm very fond of this tree because this tree, you notice this beautiful hollow in that tree. And that hollowing happened naturally. I didn't carve it. I don't like carving. So this has grown. Now this branch here, all this branch here, at least a meter long, is this year's growth. Now you can see how you get the advantage of creating a new branch. Now with that one, if I want to fill the space, I can now use that as a new branch. And also this as a new branch. And then I will get a more dense formation on that. Now this branch is going in the wrong place. I take that off. Now where the pads are established or clearly established, I leave well alone. The apex or crown is also established, I leave well alone. Look at the long shoots I'm cutting off. And come the winter I can see more force and I can improve upon it in the early spring by doing a spring prune again just to structure and choose the right branches for that tree. But meanwhile you can see how well this is growing. And again I will mention, you notice that this tree is growing in this shade area, this shade netting. If you want a tip, shade netting is a very lovely environment to use for all your trees, especially maples. If you're scared of maples getting burnt, then use shade netting. Shade netting is very good. Now I'm not cutting these off because I want to make these into branches. So I'm going to leave them alone and I will wire them maybe in the autumn or the winter. And you can see that beautiful crown and that beautiful hollow. So this is one of my prized trees. So that one is done. So let's move on, let's switch it off. Uh, okay, this was a root of a rock. That's not doing so well, maybe not fed enough. So, okay, tiny yeah, very tiny leaves. The tiny leaf ones are not so vigorous. Now, these long shoots I'm growing on because I want to create new branches. 
I won't bother to look at that because I've got many more examples. Okay, let's go to another. Now, this is one of my favorite tridents. You will probably have seen me taking photographs against this tree. And I had to bring it into this greenhouse because the hot sun that we had back in April, May, and June uh, distressed this tree quite a bit. It burnt a lot of the leaves. And because it burnt the leaves, I decided to put it in this environment, which is our back greenhouse. And the back greenhouse, as I told you, is really like a hospital. So hopefully it will produce new shoots. But I'm not worried at all, because I know that keeping it in this environment and feeding it well, I will get the new growth to come again. I can also produce new branches in next to no time. So that's another prized trident of mine. Uh, now let's go to the back where I have a lot of these tridents growing in different stages. In fact, I have tridents in a lot of places. And let's go into here. You notice, you can see how I've let these grow. These are all at least 40 to 60 centimeter long shoots. And the shapes of the trees are there. I'm not worried about it. You know, a lot of the shapes are there and I can choose new branches. You see these shoots have grown, they will become new branches and I can train them. So again, these big ones. Uh, the crown I usually prune back because I don't want the crown to get spoilt. But where there are long shoots, they can become new branches. See, sometimes you get die back of the old branches, which has happened here. So I prune that off, so hopefully we'll get new branches going from these points. But you can see the trunk and the shape of some of these trees. So we have here one, two, three, four, there's about seven of them. Not all of them were purchased at the same time. Tridents, as I told you, we used to buy them as stumps, that means as logs of wood. And all the branches of these tridents have been developed in the last 25 or 30 years. It's a long, long time. So we are adding value to them, but it takes long to grow. So when you wonder why certain trees are the price they are, it is because I've waited 25 or 30 years to get the rewards. So all these trees, you see, they're just being grown in flower pots just to make them strong. But you look at the nebari there. Look at the nebari of these trees. And I produce all the branches myself. Some of these long shoots. I will probably now wait till the winter to see if I can get a better view. I don't want to prune them all off. But if they're at the ends of the pads, then I can safely take it off. But if it comes from the trunk, I will probably decide whether I need a new branch or not. So that is the plan of action. And of course, around the crown, the crown is usually the parts that are already established. So that I can safely just prune and make a rounded head or a dome shape. You see, these could become new branches, so I'm going to leave that one. You see how vigorous it is. All these trees are vigorous. And I feed them maybe twice a year. In the early spring, I put a high nitrogen feed and at this time of the year, I put a low nitrogen, that means a high potash feed. And that's what I do to these tridents. So, you can see a lot of these long shoots. Where it is at the crown, they will be pruned back to make a rounded shape. But elsewhere, I may keep these to make new branches. So that's going to be a new branch. So that is the general principle. You can see how vigorous these shoots are. Look, see how vigorous these shoots are. So these long ones, they may help to strengthen the branch. So there's no rush to cut them. So you notice that again, growing them in big flower pots, 
makes them strong trees. We also have trees that we grow from cuttings. Very seldom do I grow them from seed because growing from seed is a very tedious and long process. But these were actually our field grown trees. We grow them in the field and then dig it up. So you look at this tree. These were grown from cuttings or small trees. And the base is there and I cut the top so this is going to be a short stubby trident. So that is the future of this tree. And I do get people who buy them. Those of you who know how to create bonsai from it, there's lots of possibility for carving and various things. So this is the sort of material that we produce ourselves. And now I'm going to take you to the field where we have some mega mega tridents. Now here is a trident. It's taller than me, it's about two meter tall or a little over two meter tall. Now this was one of the trees that nearly died on me. And not all the stumps are successful. So you can see what happened. That this is a tree with a massive trunk, but the entire top died. So this side is completely dead. So what I did was to allow the base to grow and I planted it in the ground. You can see that it's growing in the ground, not in a pot because I was desperate. And lo and behold, growing it in the ground, one tiny side shoot has become so thick and I have saved the tree. And some of these side shoots here, I'm bringing them round to in arch. I might do some jiggery pokery and do some false uh, grafting and make it appear that the tree is actually not completely dead. So that's what I can do with some of the young branches. But you can see that it's so vigorous that lots of these shoots are growing from the base and the front can eventually be carved if I wanted to. And you see, look, look at that, look at that. If you go close, you can see that one small side shoot has become the new leader there. So that is what is creating the two meter long shoots. So this can be carved right down with a big flare and we will have a new tree and I can air layer the top. Right, I have here a clutch of tridents and this is the batch of 50 that I bought back in 1993. I imported 50 stumps, 50 logs of wood and I've been developing the trunks ever since. So. Uh, some of these branches do die, but you get new branches anyway, so that doesn't bother me. And I sometimes let these long shoots grow because I can always use these long shoots to in-arch and graft branches there, which I've done in the past. So if you see these long shoots growing on these trees, you will probably realize that they may not be so stupid as you think it seems. Now this is another case in point. Look at that tree here. This is a completely dead tree. This front is completely dead, all natural hauling. No carving, this is all natural. And fortunately, there's a new leader at the back, so that's going to be growing. And this is going to be an absolutely stunning tree. And they're all being grown in the flower pot. You can see that this part is alive, so I'll get a new crown, but it's going to be completely bare in the front. I can't wait to get my hands on this. So this is going to be a very exciting project. Now these long shoots I leave because these I can be uh, using to in-arch branches to the side. Wherever I want to, I can in-arch it and plant it there and get a new branch. This is not the right time to do it. It's usually done in February. But these long branches, if I want to make a branch there, I will pin it there and I can get a branch growing there. So these are all exciting projects. They are all experiments that I have in mind. But the main thing is that the Nebari is good. Now look at this one. This one for some reason, you can't win them all, you know. I show you warts and all, that means successes and failures. Now this is a beautiful trunk, but for some reason again, the top has died, but the base is alive. So I'm not worried about that. So I could probably carve this, this is dead, it could be carved, but these are alive. So how interesting would this tree be? Look at that. Again, I can use these long branches to in-arch and make new branches should I want to. By doing that pin it there, you'll get a new branch. So this is the purpose of giving these long shoots a chance to grow. 
So if you look around here, you only need to home in on some of the trees and you look at the Nibari, the base is what has taken years and years to create. Taken years to create, but the end result is going to be stunning, absolutely stunning. This is the one with the completely dead front. Look at that tree, look at the hollow there. Completely natural, you know, you get oak trees in Lingfield with an oak tree just like this. Completely hollow trunk and look at the front. Yeah. This is the front. Look at this tree. That's going to be some stunning tree. So there's all sorts of treasures at Helms. And of course the secret is to plant them in deep pots. I think planting them in shallow pots stresses the trees, especially maples, very much. I have often wondered how successful these Japanese growers are when they keep their maples in small pots. It couldn't do them much good because small pots do stress the trees. But if you grow them in big pots, you will get a much easier control of how trees grow. So there you go. Uh, these again, these are trees that we grow from cuttings and seeds. These are our own homemade trees. People buy these to make into bonsai. I must get around to doing it. These are all homemade trees. So these are again little seedlings I put together. They were meant for a forest. I hope they get watered. They're all jammed in there. They probably don't see the light of day. Okay. So there you are. I hope you've enjoyed this little lesson on trident maples. We have a lot of tridents. And although most of them are experiments, we do sell them from time to time. But because I'm so fond of the Trident Maple, I am always reluctant to sell it. Mainly, not so much because I don't want to sell it, but I keep them to do experiments. Look at this. This is a 1.2 meter long shoot that has grown this year. So this shoot, if I wanted to again, it can be used for in-arching. Just enarch it to a branch, staple with a staple gun or pin it with a pin and you get a new branch. How easy is that? So all these long branches are kept for that. Okay, I will show you one final trident. Oh, that's got a beautiful base. Look at that base. Look at that base. That must be about two foot in diameter. Two foot in diameter. I've seen some tridents because some people in America uh, boast that they have tridents worth $20,000. How much would this be worth? A million dollars? This one is about two foot in diameter or more. Nebari, a perfect taper. So this is going to be a nice tree. Another experiment, some simply an experiment. This is one of the few air layerings that I was successful in growing. Again, so these are all our homemade, home produced trees. Okay, I will show you one final trident in another area. Let's move there. Now this trident has a very, very long history. I purchased it uh, again around the late 90s and it was sold to me relatively cheap because the grower could see straight away that it had a lot of faults. It is what we call a pigeon-breasted tree. A pigeon-breasted tree is one which has got not only bad taper, but you see that breast there. It is bulging and it spoils the base of the tree. So this part, like inverse taper, is thicker than the base. So it was sold to me cheap and it was only that tall. And I grew it in my big back greenhouse for the last 20 years, kept adding taper. Every year I add like four inches, six inches. So the first cut was there, then another cut was there, another cut there. So I keep adding and adding to make taper. So although the original tree is there, like about 70 centimeter, it is now like 1.4 uh, meter tall. Now what have I done to correct the inverse taper or the pigeon breasted effect? If you look closely over here, I will just cut this shoot off because it is distracting you from seeing what I'm doing. This, in fact, this plant here was another trident that I planted. You can see that it is not the same, really not the same trident, although it's quite a good match. 
It was one of the Trident seedlings that I got and the Trident seedling I just pushed into the side of the trunk. You can see I just pushed it in and it's meshed there. It's meshed there after 25 years and I've got a root base like that and a flare there. So it hides the pigeon breasted effect. So that is what I did, you see. And when that is grown, I will probably cut this off. Although I can make that a sacrificial and thicken that even more. So that is what I did to that tree. And most of these branches are like in arch branches to get that effect. I know that I could, I could carve that away. If I was really annoyed with it, this can be cut off and carved to, to make it thinner. But that is still a defect. You can see that there was some plastic mesh there. You know, I was trying to protect the wire. I tied a tree around there and I may have tied one or two small seedlings there but this side was not the problem side. This was the problem side. So this was a separate seedling that I put there to give it more flare. So this is the history of this tree. But I should now start developing it properly. You know, encourage the branches to grow in the right place. This I kept as a sacrificial. This will probably get uh, discarded now and this will finally see the light of day and we will get quite a big trident. I know that some people, many of my customers like these big trees. So this is the history of this particular tree. See these long shoots can become new branches. So I'm not too worried about that. So I thought I'd show you some aspect of trident cultivation using inarching by planting separate plants to thicken the root. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Although I thought I'd finished doing the Trident video, walking through the greenhouse, Josh has pointed out that I have missed some interesting Tridents. Now this one is one of the biggest root over rock that you will ever see. This I imported from in Japan in 1990. And that is one single piece of Ibigawa, Ibigawa rock, over a meter tall. This tree virtually weighs a ton. But some branches have died. You can see these branches died this side. But I'm regrowing it. And I've used, again, in-arching techniques. You know, from the roots here, there were some shoots growing. So I've let them grow. So I'm going to use these to in-arch to clamp around the rock. And I'm going to in-arch branches there. You can see what I've been doing. So this is the plan of action. Again, it's being done as an experiment. I've already done some in-arching here. If you come around this side, you will see what I did. Because this side was a bit bare, I used a branch there. Can you see this is still part of a branch? This is a branch. This is a branch which I in-arched and I've got it round on this part of the rock. So this wasn't there to begin with. So I've done all this myself. Again, done as an experiment and the tree was never that tall. It was only about that tall because you could see more rock than tree, but all this has been grown in the last 25 years and this is an ongoing project so you must be wondering I must be crazy having all these ongoing projects but the ongoing projects of course enhance my knowledge of the trees so I always regard them as very valuable experiments uh, I won't show you any more because I have lots of other tridents but uh, I thought this was worth showing you and in this case, if we come again, I will show you some of these dead bits of wood. Now, this is all dead. I'm not going to remove it because it adds to the character of the tree. Um, I've never figured out which is the front and which is the back because this looks very nice showing all the intricate uh, roots gripping the rock. But the other side, you see more rock. So this tree has two possible fronts this side or this side so both sides are nice this side you don't see as much root but nevertheless you see more interesting rock so there you go